In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we're going to look at how to mute a segment of an audio track. Sometimes you have audio that comes in when you're recording that you don't want. One method is to cut it out, but sometimes that can affect the timing of clips. We're going to look at another option, which is how to mute it. This is kind of a quick and dirty way to do this kind of action. So let me give you an example of a problematic clip. Sometimes your audio tracks contain unwanted sounds, like the sound of the cell phone you just heard. I allowed my cell phone to ring at this time to show the kinds of problems that you normally have in recording. What are some ways in which you can mute those segments? Well, we're going to show you the first way for any PowerDirector user. I'm going to enlarge the clip so I can see what I'm doing. And then I'll take my playhead and move it to the place where the cell phone begins to ring. Sounds. Anywhere along here would be fine. Now, this white line in an audio clip measures the gain. Audio that's well recorded will peak at 0 decibels to minus 6 decibels. You can increase the gain to increase the apparent loudness. What that will do also, it will amplify any noise in the track. Or you can decrease it. That's what we're going to do here. To affect the gain, we're going to use some keyframes. All I need to do is hold the control key down, and then I'll have this little box, and I can click on this blue line right here, and it will uh, put a white keyframe dot on my particular audio track. Then we'll go ahead and play until where this, the ringing is done. Okay, anywhere it looks like in here would be fine before I speak again. I'll hold Control key down and add another audio keyframe. Oops. Have to be careful if you click twice on and don't hit the line, it will bring up the audio editor. So we'll go over here and we'll put another one in and another one in. And so we have to actually create kind of a bucket where we move the keyframe down. I'm holding the control key down. And now I have dropped the audio, I muted it in effect for this segment of time. Another tip on using these keyframes is if you have one that you don't want to use, uh, you hold on it and you drag it off the screen and it will disappear. It's a little bit non-intuitive. But now if I go ahead and play the clip, we should have it without the Sounds. cell phone. Like the sound of the cell And what we've done is we haven't adjusted the length of the video track. That's especially helpful if it's tied into the audio track. We haven't cut it, so we don't have lots of little audio segments we have to worry about moving. But this is a very simple way to do this in the basic version of CyberLink PowerDirector. I'm going to uh, Z, uh, control Z out of this to get back where we started. And I'll show you another way to do that. Many users of PowerDirector also have a program called Wave Editor. And we'll give you more tutorials on that here at Sharper Turtle. But when you click on Edit Audio, Wave Editor is an option. So is Audio Director. Now, Audio Director is a separate package that you need to purchase if you want to use its features. If you don't have it, you'll still see Audio Director, but when you click on it, you'll get a screen asking you to buy it. So we're just going to stick with Wave Editor now. So I'll go ahead and load the Wave Editor on my screen. And here I have a very similar look to what I saw before. But one thing I like about the Wave Editor, I've got a lot more screen to work with. I can see my project a lot better. In fact, I can use the magnifying glass at the bottom uh, to zoom in on the audio in some very nice ways. So it gives me a lot more precision. I don't start and stop by playing the space bar. I need to use the uh, play button and the uh, pause button or stop button here. So we're going to ha go ahead and do the same thing very quickly using the wave editor. Sometimes your audio tracks contain unwanted sounds. Okay, now to move anywhere in your audio project, just click in the gray area and that will set your current timeline indicator. So I'm going to select this point and here I have my gain control. 
Another nice thing about this one is here you don't have to hold the control key down. You just click anywhere on the blue line and it will add a keyframe for audio gain. It will also tell you the percent that you've changed it. Right now I dropped that by uh, 4%. It's at 96% there. I'll click another one next to it and then we'll drop it down Then we'll move to the end of the sound over here of the uh, of the cell phone like the sound of the cell like the sound okay so I'm going to click here uh, anywhere in here should be adequate and we're going to add another gain marker here on the audio track and then we'll take another one next to it and we'll put this gain back up to 100%. And so we have our bucket here, as you will, which is the same process. So we'll go back a little bit and make sure that this audio is about what I'm looking for. I'll go Your play. audio tracks contain unwanted sounds. Now here, I did hear a little of it. And I'm not sure exactly why, because I have the gain turned down to zero. Oh, I guess I have it at 3%. That, now it's at 0%. Now it should play without anything. When it sounds. Okay, now it's perfect. When it sounds. Good. Now it's perfect. But this is an example of two ways to do that. Now when you're done with this, you simply click on the X in the upper right corner. We'll ask if you want to save the changes. I'll say no in this case. Uh, but then it would bring it back into your uh, PowerDirector main screen edited according to uh, the adjustments you've made. But these are two ways to deal with some of these sounds without modifying the length or the integrity of the audio clip that you're editing.